G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone. Today I'm interviewing Karina Ludwig from Function Fox based in Victoria, Canada. Thanks for your time today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Let's start with how we know each other. So I reached out on LinkedIn, thought uh, the business looks really interesting and the audience would appreciate hearing uh, the journey. Tell our audience a bit about your business, what it does and how it makes money. Sure. So we help creatives be more productive and profitable is our claim to fame. Simply put, that's online timesheet software. It's not very glamorous, but uh, we've been doing that for 21 years. And uh, we make money really by being a SaaS business. It's a monthly subscription software service. And we, we help companies track time, track their projects and their clients and personnel, and then they can bill their clients accordingly. So it's a specific niche in the project management space. So for creatives, uh, you know, agencies and freelancers. Exactly. So about 70% of our user base is creatives. We also help in-house design firms. So larger companies that have an internal marketing department, uh, we help them as well. And they're very similar to creative firms. They function very similar. Uh, so that's a, another group for us. But we've always been niche focused uh, for as long as we've been in business. And it's proven to be very successful for us. Great. How did you start out? Yeah, the, the start out came really from a need. Um, so we had a creative agency, a creative business, and we were looking for a simple, intuitive way to track our time, manage our projects. And there really wasn't anything out of the market. And you can think back to, you know, 2000, people weren't even doing online banking at the time. So there wasn't really web-based software. SaaS wasn't a thing, you know, it was back then it was ASP. And we were looking for something for us to be able to build our clients more effectively and really couldn't find anything. So we took, you know, put together some Excel format and um, put together some reports and thought, you know, there's got to be something better. So we started to build something for ourselves. And then we realized that, hey, we've, we've got a product here that we think could be really helpful for the industry. My background is in advertising and design, and I hadn't come across anything like that. So we put it out to some of our um, friends and family or people that were in the business. And they said, yeah, you know, this is really good. I haven't seen anything like this. We also did a, a research study. We called over 300 companies in the U.S. We're from Canada, um, but looked at the U.S. market and said, you know, called come around and found that there was no predominant leader in the industry. People were using pen and paper. They were using Excel. Uh, FileMaker Pro, but there really wasn't anything out there. So we thought, you know what, we might actually have something here. And we continued on from there. We got some beta testers, put it out, and uh, it slowly took off. And 21 years later, fast forward, thousands of users around the world uh, using our product. So we had a hunch and, and it worked for us. Fantastic. That sounds great. Do you, do you have some key numbers you can share to illustrate the growth over those 21 years? Yeah, so we started off with using people from the agency. So it was sort of, you know, an hour here and there. Then it was a small group and no one was officially on payroll because we didn't have, um, you know, money at the beginning. And uh, slowly we sort of incorporated, we did some initial round of uh, funding from friends and family, about, about a half a million dollars to start off with. And then uh, we've grown now to over the 20, 20 years, you know, we've topped out about 20 people. We've always aimed to be slow and steady growth uh, and really just adding people as we needed to. And so that, that has worked very well for us as opposed to rapid growth. Yep. And so with the initial investment uh, of half a million, we haven't added any, looked for any additional funding since then. We've always been self-funded and, and use our own profits to, to reinvest into the business. Great. Yeah. And so it, really at the start, there might have been like one full-time equivalent effectively working on the idea or the business. Yeah, it was myself. Um, so I was full-time, but I was paid out of the agency. 
And then we brought in a developer to really build the product. They were also hired under the agency and paid out of that uh, payroll. And then slowly, as we started to get our initial first customers, it was, you know, an 80-20 split and then a 60-40 split and sort of until we could sustain the payroll ourselves. Yep. Um, but it was, yeah, it was basically bootstrapped from the beginning and, um, you know, slowly transitioned over the first three to five years until we were in the black. Yep. Great. And with thousands of subscribers and 15 to 20 team members, so I'm guessing, you know, top line is in the, you know, multiple million dollars per annum. Yeah, we're still a private company, so we don't share those numbers uh, to the detail, but yes, in, in the millions. And so, you know, we hit our first million while it was, I think, yeah, within the four or five years. Yep. Um, you know, and I'd have to go back and look exactly. It, it seemed like forever at the time, but um, yeah, definitely have grown since then. Double digit growth in the early days and uh, keeping that double digit growth, you know, 20 years later is, is really tough. I can't say that we always do it, but we have had growth every year, which I'm very proud of. Our team is very proud of even during the recession, even during COVID, yeah. um, you know, we've had growth, which is, is definitely challenging in this industry with, with a lot of competitors. Yeah, I was going to ask COVID because a few of my mates that have got online businesses, they and even e-commerce business selling physical products, they, they all had a massive boom from COVID. Is, did you guys have a similar effect? Yeah, it was a bit of yin and yang, honestly. We had agencies, because our, our business is focused on creatives, we had agencies that were doing uh, or using traditional methods, so whiteboards in their office and uh, things where they hadn't been online yet. And then everyone went home and they realized, okay, we actually need something that's a little bit more uh, sound for the team. And so we saw a big boom in that. Um, we're an online platform and always have been, and so that worked very well. We had some of our clients that focused on the hospitality industry or industries that were not booming and subsequently they had to let go of some of their teammates so that you know took a little bit of a, a, a dip in our numbers just subsequently based on their layoffs that they had to do um, but we didn't see a big shift and um, i would say that it, it worked out well for us we were sitting in a good spot we didn't have to lay any team members off um, in fact we hired during that time yep. and so it's it's you know we're very fortunate when was the moment you felt like you'd succeeded Huh. Um, probably, you know, there's little wins along the way. And I think as a company, you really have to celebrate all those little wins. I remember our first customer, first paying customer that wasn't a friend or family member. <laughs> yeah, it's always a good <laughs> feeling, broke, isn't it? Yeah, it was a great feeling. We broke out the champagne and we're like, you know, let's just keep this going. So I remember that. But the success along the way, I think, you know, it's it's a good hire sometimes. You know, I've, I've been really excited about, about certain hires. Um, it's landing a, a whale client. It's, you know, landing another great client or it's a really good connection in terms of uh, getting coverage or getting a referral. I think referrals are always success for us because yep. it just means that, you know, what we're sharing and the product that we're putting out there, people truly value and uh, they're sharing it with others. So I'd say, you know, success looks for us um, when people are happy and people are sharing our story and sharing our product. Yep. Number one thing you'd recommend to marketing a fast growing business. Great people, uh, great people and a great product. I think you have to have both. Um, the product is, is primary, I would say. Uh, regardless of what you're selling, referrals is is the number one. So back to that, I would say, if you can have a great product and great people that can tell your story, uh, you'll do do wonders. Is referrals the your main source of uh, new clients? It is. Yeah, it has been uh, for our entire tenure of the company. Oh. Referrals is always one of our biggest drivers. Yep, that's great. That doesn't mean that you just shit at the other marketing. Just you've got a strong product and great service. Mm -hmm. Anything else on funding the business? So initial little bit of investment, half a million dollars, any bank finance or grants? 
Yeah, we do. We have, uh, there's a Canadian grant. We've looked into a few different grants. IRAP is one that people can look into if they're interested. And then SHRED, which is the uh, Science Research and Educational Development Fund, I believe it stands for. Um, but SHRED is really good where if you're building new innovative uh, technology, they will come in and, and give you funding for that. Um, so we wish we'd have learned about that a little bit earlier. If there's if there's new people starting businesses, that's one you can definitely look into in, in Canada. Um, it's a little bit different in the US. And then in terms of other funding, just self-funded, uh, we've really, you know, slow and steady growth. There's lots of other companies uh, that sit in the same space as we do, and they've gone sort of the opposite, where they've gotten huge investments and uh, large seed funding and subsequently aren't around anymore. We've always taken a different approach and uh, it's worked for us. So we're, we're happy with the way that we funded the company. Grant, so I just don't understand it. Governments, same here in Australia, they're just not that well advertised or marketed. There's a great one here. If your company's doing, I think got to be at least three years old, doing 1.5 million top line, there's a, a $20,000 grant you can get matched. So it's going to be a $40,000 project, but it's entitled. It's not a competitive bid, a, a grant. So but hardly anyone knows about it. I'll probably put 10 businesses onto that. And it just seems to be governments are terrible at getting the word out there or marketing to the right people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're hard to find, but when you do find them, um, they can be very lucrative and really help your business. You know, we've seen hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years from those. Um, and they're, they're really, you know, they help you be more innovative. That's yeah. one of the criteria. Yeah. And so there's things that you normally wouldn't try, but you kind of go, well, this is, we call it shreddable. You know, this is likely shreddable. So let's, let's try that. And you can actually hire people against it and fund their salary out of the, the grants. So yeah. that's been very helpful. If you were to start up today with plenty of funding, would you go into your industry? Huh, that's a that's a really good question. You know, 20 years ago, there was very few people are in our industry that were offering this type of product to creatives. Now there's a lot more, um, especially if you go more general and you just say time tracking and project management as a whole. So if I were doing it now, it's a tough go. You'd really have to have a lot of money to to hit the competitive space. I think part of the reason that we have the traction that we do is it, we've got credibility. We've been doing it for 21 years. And um, most of the new players that come to the table, you know, they're around for maybe three to five years if they can hit that, that growth spurt. Um, but a lot of them we've seen and we've been, oh, wow, you know, this one looks really good. And a year and a half later, they're gone. So it's tough. Can you outline the most stressful point in your small business growth journey so audience can learn from it? I would say that the most stressful point in the business is in the beginning when you're when you're in the red and you've got staff on payroll and you're hoping that you can meet next month's payroll um, where the money is not just flowing in yet. And that's the most stressful, I think, when you're when you're affecting people's families and their children and, you know, you're definitely determined to succeed and, and you see the path ahead of you. Um, but there's some roadblocks or there's some hurdles along the way that you have to overcome. And I would say that's the most stressful. What area in business do you feel you've had to work on the most to add the greatest value? Yeah, I would say there's, there's lots of things to work on in a business. I would say that the staff is the primary. Um, there's 10 things and I'll give you sort of my, my top 10. When I listen to these types of podcasts, I always try and find the nuggets that I can take away and things like true meat that I can use in my business. Yeah. And so over the years, I've put together my top 10 and I'm going to share them. I've written them down really quick. And these are the things that I have learned over the years that I wish I would have known earlier. So number one, hire slow and fire fast. Definitely. Uh, really important. And, you know, I think people are, are very personable, but they don't fire fast enough. That would be a, a number one. Number two, say yes and figure it out later. I think early days we, you know, say, oh, could we do that? Should we do that? Just say yes and figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, believe in yourself when no one else is. There's lots of competition out there. There's lots of people doing things better than you might ever do, but just focus on yourself. Number four, uh, we've been niche focused. That's been very successful for us. I think everyone tries to be, or a lot of people try to be everything for everybody. 
uh, I would recommend the opposite. Yeah, yeah jack, jack of all of trades, master of none. Master of none. Yep, yep. Uh, number five, focus on what you're doing, um, not what everyone else is doing. So when everyone else was doing email blasts, we were doing direct mail marketing and we stood out from the crowd. So that's what I'd recommend there. Number six, surround yourself with good people, a uh, good team and good mentors. I can't stress this enough. If you have toxic people as part of your workplace or yep. people that you're aligned with, you know, ask yourself why. Number seven, admit your failures and shortcomings. No one can be great at everything. Um, and so early days, I was like, you know what? That's not an area of expertise for me. Hire someone that's better than you for that. And, and don't be afraid to do that and admit that. Um, which leads to number eight, always hire people better than you. I think that's a tough one for some people, but I've found that, you know, we've got really good people on our team and everyone complements each other really well and um, hire for what's missing on your team. Right. Number nine, focus on culture. Uh, you know, should you take care of your staff or should you take care of your clients? If you take care of your staff or your team, they will ultimately take care of your clients and you don't have to worry. So that, that's a big one for us. And then really just number 10, be yourself, be authentic, have fun along the way. You spend a lot of time at work. And so if you're doing what you love, um, that's an old cliche, but if you're doing what you love, it, it will work out. And, and I've always believed in that one. So there's my top 10 for you. All right. I, uh, I think you've answered all the questions I've got here, all 28 <laughs> questions in that. <laughs> Great. What have you enjoyed the least about managing fast growth? Mm -hmm. Well, the people, I'll always go back to the people. It's, it's the best and, um, and the, the most challenging, I'll say. At the end of the day, it's people's lives and you're not just dealing with, you know, users or numbers, you're dealing with actual lives. And if you fire someone, you know, that's going to affect their family. Uh, so those are the toughest ones, but the, the ones that you need to make the calls on to, to run the business better. What do you love most about growing a small business? For our business, uh, it's been our mission since day one. It's helping creative companies and really having an impact on their business and on our internal team. And we, we've had team members join in their early 20s. Uh, now they've built houses and have families and they're still with us today. And, and that's really rewarding to see. Or taking businesses that you know have started their business with us and 20 years later, you know they've got very successful businesses to see that growth uh, has been very um, long pause. <laughs> <laughs> rewarding. Yeah, yeah, very rewarding. Yeah, thank yep. you. What has been the biggest mindset shift for you in your small business growth journey? Really, you're not alone. Uh, it feels like it some days. And, you know, people say it's lonely at the top. I would say it's it's lonely if you don't seek out help with other people. There's plenty of help out there, mentors, advisors, and you just have to be open to ask for it and accept the help. Someone's been on that path before you. And it's shows like this that I think really share that and uh, lots of opportunity for learning. So I'd recommend just that's that's one big mindset shift is to just reach out to others. Yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. Learn from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. What's the number one habit you think a small business owner needs to, to develop and maintain? Definitely determination and diligence uh, and connections. Never realize the true importance of, of networking in the early days. You know, you think I'm going to do this on my own and I'm going to just fight for it myself um, and our team will do it. But really connections can get you so much farther faster. And uh, I would say do more of that if you're not already doing that. Find it hard to define a clear strategy, then communicate it and execute it alongside the rest of your team? Or you currently don't work a simple quarterly strategic plan to boost your team's performance? Our Business Growth Formula online course is perfect for small business owners with 5 to 30 team members wanting to grow. We share the mindsets, habits and tools to be a legendary leader in your business. GrowSmallBusiness.com so You've got around 20 team members now. Can you talk to how you've added people to the team, some wins, mistakes and advice for those listening? Yeah, absolutely. We've hired probably over 100 people in the last 20 years. I would say the number one thing to, uh, in terms of advising, is trust your gut. It's always right. And um, again, that hire slow and fire fast. Uh, good people can make the difference, and 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 you know, uh, 
people that aren't an ideal fit can have just as much of an impact or even more. Yeah, I think those two points, it's really good to touch on go with your gut, but also hire slow. I think small business owners go short on this. They don't invest enough time in the recruitment process. But the more you can get a candidate talking, the better chance your gut is going to have to make its mind up um, on whether they're a good fit or not. So, you know, do several interview rounds, get more than obviously one or two people interviewing them and let them do 80% of the talking in the interviews and then um, see what your gut tells you. Yeah, and we've also done team interviews in the early days when our team was small enough. The entire team had to vote to have that person come on board. And there was people that I wanted on the team and the rest of the team were like, no, you know what, this is not the right person for this reason. And um, I listened to that early days and it, it worked out very well for us. There's other ones where you're like, you know what, I really need to just fill this position and yeah. this person seems right and you, you put them into that role and, and they're not a fit. And I think the, the other one on that is um, we pro promote from within. So, you know, taking your, your good candidates or your good employees and moving them up to manager roles, really make sure that they're right for that. Sometimes they haven't been and, you know, they might be a great salesperson, but they're not a great manager. Yeah. And so don't, don't just think that automatically because they're great in sales or because they're great in this role, they'll automatically be great at leading people. It's not always the case. Absolutely. That's a great point. What are some things you recommend to building a sustainable and kick-ass culture to help with the growth? Yeah, I'll go back to one of my earlier points. Just be authentic, be yourself. Um, you know, I think a lot of leaders aren't vulnerable. They, they're not uh, open enough. I would say, you know, we're all people at the end of the day. We all, we all do the same things at the end of the night. You know, we're all going to bed. We're all having meals. We're all going to the bathroom, whatever it may be. But uh you know, just be yourself. And the more you can connect with your team on a, on a personal level, I think the more the team is aligned in terms of working together, as opposed to working, you know, for someone, I always like to work with the team as opposed to, you know, having someone work for me. Yeah. Tell our audience how you've handled balance. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't have kids, but I do have a family. I've got three, three great Danes, a husband, a cat. Um, and balance for me is every day finding something for yourself. Even, you know, I like traveling. I like learning new experiences and adventures. Um, but doing something every day for yourself has always been successful for me in terms of finding balance. Yeah. And how much professional development have you invested in yourself over the years? Uh. I would say quite a bit in the early days, maybe not as much because really, really focused on, on the business and a lot of hours there over the years as we've hired more people. Um, I've looked at professional development in, in different ways. Uh, before COVID, I would drive about 40 minutes a day. And so I would do podcasts on my way to and from work. Yep. Now that's, that's <laughs> shifted a bit. Um, I've joined a couple boards. And so I've sat on a couple boards. One is for Island Women in Science and Tech. And the other one is Biotech, which is a advanced tech and entrepreneurship council it's in the SaaS tech space and so those have added a lot of professional development and then general conferences and um you know courses here and there that that i've done what about mentors or coaches along the way yeah we've definitely hired um coaches or mentors along the way usually when it's we've hit a plateau or when the team has come to a crossroads or a major conflict um, you know, do we want to go in this direction or that direction? And no one has a crystal ball. So you kind of have a few different heads at the table and kind of think, okay, what's the next roadmap that we're going to go down? I think those are always great times to bring a mentor or coach to help align the team when, when you can use a little bit more alignment. Um, and that's always proved to be quite um, valuable for the team. All right. We're on to our final five questions. What do you think is the hardest thing in growing a small business? I would say good people, having a good product, uh, and determination um, more than confidence. Favorite business book, which has helped you the most? Mm. There's some good classic ones, Good to Great with Jim Collins. Yep, uh, the book. one, yeah, that's a good one. And then there's some other ones that are not a, as widely known or, or read, but um, Never Split the Difference is a really good one. That's Chris Voss. It's on negotiation. Extraordinary Leadership. I really like that one. That's Robin Sharma. And then for really mapping out the business, sort of a one-page strategic plan, the Rockefeller Habits and the Metronome Effect, those are two that I would say 
have been really helpful for in harness and um, scaling up. Yeah, it's, I think Rockefeller's now called Scaling Up, that book. It's, it's a great one. They talk about yeah. gazelles, the companies. They focus on what he calls gazelles, companies that are growing at mm -hmm. least 20% per annum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we used that in the early days and really helped with team alignment and yep. getting everything on one page, literally on one page. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's been very successful for us. Any great podcasts or online learning tools you use for your own professional development? Well, this one, of course. Um, <laughs> in our industry, there's there's a good one. It's called Two Bobs. Um, that's one that I, I like for the creative industry. And then there's other ones along the way, um, you know, podcasts here and there. There's lots of great TED Talks. It really depends on your industry and what your interests are. But those would be the top ones I'd, I'd think of the top of my head. Yep. One tool you'd recommend to help grow a small business? No, of course. Nothing else but function flags. <laughs> <laughs> No, but really, um, it's helped thousands of businesses and uh, we're very proud of what we've built. And really, we don't use any third party tools except for our own and uh, credit card processing. So yeah. I would say, you know, that for us, that's been it's we use our own product and um, we've been very successful because of it. Yep. Uh, in the uh, tech industry, eat your own dog food, I think is a common saying. Exactly. Yeah. Final, my favorite question. What would you tell yourself on day one of starting out? <laughs> Yeah, day one of starting out, I would tell myself, you'll still be happy 21 years from now, and you'll have thousands of raving Fox fans and happy team members. So just just go for it. Great. Thanks for your time today, Karina. I think the audience got a lot of value out of what you shared with us. A phenomenal journey over the last 21 years, around 20 team members now, multi or several million dollar per annum revenue and providing a great service to a niche industry in the creative space. And uh, thank you for sharing it with us today. Yeah, thanks for your time, Troy. Enjoy it. That's it. Thanks for listening. Please leave a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. It means more small business owners will find our cast and help people with their business growth journey.